welcome everybody. It is uh, April 16th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Uh, my name is Nick Kremp. I'm the Leominster Conservation Agent. Uh, this is the Leominster Conservation Commission meeting. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to remind everyone to silence any devices you might have so we don't have any interruptions. And I will proceed with a roll call of the commissioners present. Uh, Jim Chambers. Here. Uh, Nick Venti. Here. Mike Seeky. Here. Bob Seacard. Here. Uh, Rich Gullick. Here. And Chuck Raymond. Here. And absent is Stephanie Quinlan, although she may be coming in uh, after a few minutes. But we have six out of seven, so that's a quorum. So we can go ahead and kick it off. I'll pass it off to my chair, uh, Chuck Raymond. Thank you, Nick. Onward. All righty, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, what we'd like to do at the beginning of each meeting is open up uh, to the public uh, if they have any comments on items that are not on the agenda. But I assume you two gentlemen are here for the agenda in That's some true. fashion. Yes. Okay, so we'll move on then. All right, under new, nothing under new hearings. Under continued hearings, I'll go ahead and read it into, into the record. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts Wildlife Protection Act, the Lemster Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on a notice of intent for the construction of a billboard in a wetland buffer zone. Address 198 Hamilton Street, map and parcel 236-4, DP number 199-1191. The floor is yours, sir. Please introduce right. yourself. Will do. Chair, since we're... There you go. <laughs> no chair. Oh, I'm sorry about that. All right. So, John Plifka from McCarty Engineering, here tonight representing the applicant, uh, Clear Channel Outdoor, LLC. So this plan uh, was previously presented in front of the commission back in February mm -hmm. um, the 27th of this year. And we haven't been back in front of you guys because we were waiting on a file number from DEP. So um, the plans you see tonight haven't changed from our original submission. We, we have received our file number. They had a couple of comments. Um, one of the big ones being that they were concerned about tree clearing. And I just, I believe this was expressed to the commission at the previous hearing, but there's no tree clearing on property associated with this project. Um, there may be some proposed tree clearing within the MassDOT right of way. So the applicant's actively working with MassDOT to fulfill any requirements they have. And once they kind of check the box there, my office, McCarty Engineering, is gonna come back with a separate NOI just so we can have MassDOT as the owner on the WPA form. Okay, yep. So that's... So, that's so, I'm sorry. No, sorry. no, no, no. go ahead, Ryan. Okay. Um, so the tree clearing is is, 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 is the tree clearing being taken out for your project, though? The trees it, they are linked, but it's off property, so we okay. couldn't include it. Okay, okay. So this, that, that'll be somewhere between the between the highway and, and, and the red wetland line, somewhere in there? Correct, yeah. Okay. It'll be... Okay, but they'll be coming back. The scope and, you know, the details with that will be forthcoming okay. within the next NOI. All right. So th that's kind of all I have. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Is the billboard going up before the clearing, or...? They're going to be done simultaneously. We kind of just wanted to get this done. Uh, approved for the property. Mm -hmm. We had one on 152 Hamilton Street, and now we were proposing the 198. The, 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 the basically right next door, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. And it is kind of shown on that plan, yeah. the bottom right hand corner, yep. which has received an order of conditions. Oh, down there, yep. Thank you, Bob. So um, yep. just right. trying to do it in the cleanest way possible that we have it checked off for each property and then go to Mass Dot, get their approval, mm -hmm. and then come back to you guys for any proposed tree clearing. Okay. All right, yeah, no, we uh, discussed that a few weeks ago, so you know, I'm, I'm all set. Anybody have any questions, comments, nope. concerns? No. All right, anybody that, uh, uh, out here have any questions, comments, sir? No. Okay. All right. All right. I, I just want to clarify that the only issue or the only comment that the DEP had was tree clearing. As far as when they issued the uh, file number, they had a question about stormwater. Okay. It's such a small increase that it's, I think it's eight square feet of increase of impervious on site that we didn't include a stormwater checklist and it's such a small amount that it's it's almost negligible. Smaller than this table top. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, they fought us a little bit on that, but we gave them a, a full stormwater memo, including a stormwater checklist. So it they were satisfied on that end. 
I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt you, but there, there was no comment about the amount of vehicles that have increased over on that site since the last half a year or so? I mean, from, the, from DP, no. no. There was no okay. comment about vehicles. Okay. It's getting crowded down there. I, I, I don't drive by it too often, but... <laughs> okay. I just wondered if there was something else I could... Okay. Would anyone like me to read the comment out loud? It's... Uh, yeah, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so... Uh, yeah. so uh, so uh, for file number 199-1191, uh, the one that we're discussing here, is DEP uh, issues about the following comment. Uh, the project appears to describe tree clearing within portions of the subject property and within the mass DOT right away. Property owner permission is required for both properties. A signature page from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Massachusetts should be submitted to the Conservation Commission and Mass EP. The extent of tree clearing and associated earthwork, stumping, etc., is unclear. Trees to be removed should be located and shown on the plan. The Commission should confirm that all clearing is located outside of the bordering vegetated wetland in Mass DOT's right of way. So basically, yeah, it, just, it hasn't been you know. finalized yet because yeah. we're still going back and forth with Mass DOT, and once it is, all that information will be provided to you. Right. Okay. So You're saying that all tree clearing has to be outside of the boundary zone. Is that correct? Uh, outside of the, the actual like wetland resource. The actual yeah. resource, not the boundary. Okay. Yeah. Because that would require some sort of replication or restoration or something if they're altering the actual resource. Sure. Resource area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so it sounds like they just want better definition of what will be cleared. Right, and that should be all addressed in a following right. notice of intent. So I was going to suggest that um, we could add a special condition just clarifying that any tree clearing depicted on this, because this plan will be included with this order of conditions, just clarifying that that will be addressed in a following notice of intent and that we're not permitting the tree clearing in this, we're just permitting the building. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. idea. That's yeah. a good idea. So, that would be my only suggestion. Um, and with that, and without getting, without jumping ahead too far, I would uh, recommend that we. Well, oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll yeah. close it. Um, so uh, yeah. so uh, entertain a motion then to to I close know, this I portion. Oh shoot, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, what kind? How big is the pad underneath the the? Uh, so it's it's eight square. Sorry. Okay. So it's like uh, it's just a big sauna too. Basically. All right. I'm just interested because with the uh, Prospect Park. We were dealing with eight by eight inch yeah. places. <laughs> yeah. So that was because it was in the actual resource area, whereas this is all buffer work. Yeah. Buffer and, then, and then that was CCA treated wood, and this is just big hunk of pipe cement. Oh, it's concrete. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. No, but good. That is a good question. Good question. Yeah. All right. So I'll entertain a motion then to close this portion of the hearing. I'd like to make that motion. Thank you much. Yes. Second. Second. Thank you, Richard. And I will take the commission's vote by roll call. Jim Chambers? Aye. Uh, Nick Venti? Aye. Mike Seeke? Aye. Bob Seacard? Aye. Rich Gullick? Aye. And Chuck Raymond? Aye. Okay. And so uh, recommendations at this point, Nick? You, you, you mentioned something. So yeah, I would recommend that we um, include a special condition just specifying that this is permitting only the work uh, for the billboard and not any of the tree clearing that's also depicted on the plans, that any tree clearing would be um, further addressed in a future NOI. Um, and yeah, other than that, I would recommend that we um, approve the order of conditions as presented today and in previous meetings. All right, good. Thank you, Nick. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the project as described by the applicant along and along with uh, the agent's special condition regarding um, the tree clearing. Mm -hmm. I'll make that motion. Thank you, James. For a second. I'll second it. Thank you, Michael. Okay. And I will take the commission's vote by roll. Jim Chambers. Aye. Nick Venti. Aye. Mike Seeke. Aye. Bob Seacard. Aye. Rich Gullick. Aye. And Chuck Raymond. Aye. All right. All right. Motion passes. Order Thank is you very much. Thanks, Johnson. Appreciate your time. Good evening. Thank you, you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, were you here for this? Yes. Oh, okay. I just, we're, we're always in the real estate. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just want to make sure if, if you were the only one here, I was going to have you 
you were down at the bottom of the agenda, I was going to move you up. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right, good. All right, thank you. All right, thank moving you on then. Yeah. Have a good night. You to the know. regular meeting. Communications. Uh, Nick McCannon Street, parcel 372-3, clearing. Yeah, so this is the parcel that abuts uh, Johnny Rowe Park off of Mechanic Street, it's down by the down by the North Nashua. Um, this had come up several months ago in the in the fall or even late summer. It might have been August um, when this there was a unpermitted tree clearing that was reported at the site. I went down and uh, intercepted the tree guy. We I issued a cease and desist and then um, the property owner Guido came and subsequently discussed you know what was going on there what his plans for the site were and he wasn't really sure I mean, I should, it should also be known that this almost all if not all within the 200 foot riverfront area yeah it was mostly riverfront area um, that was cleared again unpermitted um, Guido wasn't aware of all the the permitting requirements with uh, the wetlands protection act and he was going to come back to us with a more fleshed out notice of intent or a restoration plan, um, depending on what he wanted to do with the site and how permittable it, it would be. Um, so he had been in discussion with Haley Ward and some other people over the last few months. Um, most recently, on Thursday or Friday of last week, I got a call from Brian Marchetti of McCarty Engineering, who had been um, contacted by Guido. So Brian is now gonna be the one that's gonna be working on, um, I would imagine a restoration plan. Um, he asked me what the commission kind of wants to see happen out of this so for me to bring him up to speed um, from our side of it. And I told him, you know, basically everything that had happened, the history of the site, how it was unpermitted, how Guido had agreed to come back with a, you know, a more fleshed out plan. I told him that at minimum, we're gonna wanna see um, like replantings to replace the trees that were lost and probably some sort of invasive management monitoring because <coughs> if nothing gets done to that site and it just is left alone, it's probably gonna all fill up with Japanese knotweed and a bunch of other invasives. So um, I told him that's generally what we would like to see and he's gonna be working on that and coming back to us either April 30th or the first first meeting in May with uh, a restoration plan uh, for that site so uh, Brian Marchetti from McCarty is gonna be the one working on that Guido is moving forward with um, presenting plans to address what was done on that site so just basically bringing everyone up to speed yes who was the tree clear? Who, 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 who was the uh, lumberjack? Um, the company. I yeah, I can't. Yeah, I, saw the, I saw the equipment down there, but it was last summer for you. Yeah, I snapped a picture of it. Back. Oh, my question mm -hmm. more directly is: Do they not have any responsibility for knowing? No. So the violation notice. They cut trees. Yeah, the violation notice. Any enforce? We haven't issued any enforcement order on this. We issued a violation notice. Um, just stating to Guido like what he did wrong, what he needs to get permits for that he did not get permits for. Um, but any violation notice, any enforcement order carries with the property and it's the property owner's responsibility. So if Guido were to sell it, for instance, then it would go to whoever is the new buyer. They would inherit the violation and would have to, they would be responsible for addressing anything. Um, so noted though, and I agree. Yeah. If, if we can get the name of that that that, 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 that tree company, we should. I don't know if necessarily reach out to them, but, but keep an eye out for, for, for their work in the future. Yeah, yeah. To say the least. I, well, I think know, I noticed that, to that, that, that was the commission that, or the agent would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's not wait for a repeat. Yeah. That's like what happened on Elm and uh, exactly. You know, it, it's. You hear it over and over, oh, we didn't know, we didn't know, we didn't know. Yeah. And, you know, if if someone were to go for an electrical permit and they weren't a licensed electrician and somebody inspected it and it was wrong, they'd have to fix it. Not just Same thing with plumbing. So anybody that's a contractor in this city 
should understand. I mean, I'm a homeowner and I've got a two-way 1C hydraulics license. I know what the rules are for dig safe and I know what the rules are in and around the, the buffer zone. And that not necessarily an owner would, but everybody that contracts themselves to this out here should have some responsibility to understand what the rules and regulations are. They can't just say, oh, gee, we didn't realize. Yeah. And just walk away. And walk away yeah. after, after the damage is done. Usually it's been somebody's friend who did the cutting as opposed to <laughs> well, the formal tree company. company. But that's kind of understandable. We certainly need, should reach out to the tree companies. We've talked yeah. about this before in a proactive sense. Yeah. Of right. doing the sending out a yeah. flyer or something to everybody. That's right. The yellow pages. All the landscaping companies, the, exactly. the, the um, um, land clearing companies, they know the rules. Yeah. One question I want to ask, though. Uh, it, uh, in terms of what Nick was telling this guy from from McCarty, yep. What we'd like to see. Are there any other things that you, that you folks would, would like would like to, to see? Uh, to see this. <laughs> What's that, Rich? Um, just I didn't see the site. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to tell Nick if you want anything else you'd like to see. No. The owner. Okay. All right. We'll okay. make sure. Yeah. We'll get more. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll get more specifics. Um, All right. But he'll, oh, he'll be in touch with me question. before they present anything and then at the What's his intended yes. purpose for the clearing? Um, for event developing it eventually for something. Um, but I think he, I think the plan was, you know, clear it and get the money for the lumber immediately. And then he had plans to develop it later on down the road. Yeah, there's some, I recall some kind of putting up some kind of building warehouse, maybe, but yeah, I forget exactly. Yeah, some industrial use, yeah. but he didn't have anything specific or a buyer or anything like that. He just came yeah. into ownership of this land and decided but there's to also the, 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 the paper road that, that used to be theoretically part of Nashua Street, mm -hmm. so yeah. all, that, all that in there as well. Yeah, there was a, there was a question of access back in there because right. the access to that parcel is technically it's the parking lot for Johnny Row, so that was a complication uh, for developing that site. There was a whole riverfront area question is complicating development of that site. So, yeah. um, I think he had plans that changed once we got in touch with him. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, All right. I think he's yeah he's been pursuing whatever he can now, but I think they're getting to the point where they have to just restore it. Yep. Yeah. About them. And just because I did walk the site, I I know that there was delineation done prior to the mm -hmm. cutting yes yep. so so i believe well, yeah. it was 50 was, that was just 50 feet from the from the river i think it was matt morrow was it that yeah so matt had flagged it prior to the clearing yeah. um and i can't recall if he was because i know that it was a there was a previous owner to that right before the clearing took place guido bought the property and then basically cleared it very soon after that so i think and Matt will be coming ahead of us in the next couple of weeks for other things as well. He's he flagged the the property on Elm Street, which we're talking about next. Um, but you know we could ask him at that time. But I think he might have flagged it under the ownership of the previous owner, oh. and then we know about the property. In any case, Matt wasn't involved with um, any of the plans afterward. He right. was contracted to flag the wetlands, and that's what he did. But. I don't know why he was contracted in the first place, if there was no one permitting or anything like that. He would be more privy to those yeah. details than I would, but. To be continued. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. yeah. Correct. It's a tangled web. Hold on tight. I'd like to be able to conclude that if somebody has hired a professional wetland scientist to delineate that, that they are aware of the act. Yeah, so that's what I mean. If it was a previous owner. If it was a previous that, that yeah. I, 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 ca I caught that juxtaposition yeah. there, but. Still, and, and it's the, the owner is what's responsible. In fact, it changes, isn't supposed to matter to us, technically, right? As you just right. said a moment ago. No, but you kind of understand owners. how that could happen. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But we're, we're getting that, well, that's a segue into Hill Street, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> Something similar. Well, exactly. Well, yep. Moving on to Elm Street. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. parcel 519-12A clearing as well. What's, what's happening there? Yeah, so we had had Steve Harper uh, come in who is involved with some aspects of this project. It was on March 12th he, uh, he was here. And at that time, 
Um, we had asked him to have the, the gravel and the trench removed and the trench refilled in with the soil that had been excavated, which was still on site. Um, so fill in the trench. Um, we had asked him to do that by today and then by April 30th, we were hoping to have a more um, official like restoration plan on paper to be presented at that time. So I talked to Steve today and he has not had the trench filled in. Um, he says due to the, the rainy weather that we've had, he ha can't get a machine in there or else he's just gonna get mired in the mud and everything. So um, that's perfectly understandable to me. I understand that. He did actually mention something on that March 12th meeting about you know weather dependent. We should have this done by April 16th. So it has been very wet. Um, he was, uh, he's planning on getting out there later this week, and at the very latest, he should have that trench filled in by April 30th. Um, and he also talked to me about uh, Tommy Christopher, who is the person who has been contracted to draft that restoration plan. So he's been in touch with Tom Christopher. Um, he has started work on that restoration plan, and they still anticipate having that ready um, for presentation here on April 30th next meeting so so that's the status right now if anyone's driven by uh, the trench is still there but that should be addressed soon um, by the next meeting they should have more to present by the next meeting and um, Matt Morrow did go out and flag he reflagged the property um, as was requested also at that March 12th meeting um, he was hired by Mary Foley to do so and he I'm, I have been out there but I'm told that he was out there on Friday, Steve Harper also confirmed that he was out there over the weekend uh, flagging the wetlands. So I assume those wetlands were determined by soil type and not by <laughs> the species of trees. Probably. I would imagine it's like it's a combination of both. <laughs> yeah. I know Matt used to both. <laughs> yeah. But with no trees gone. Yeah. Yeah. For as for that finger that yeah. stretches up the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, oh, indeed. Was, oh, well, yeah. Has, has Mary Foley been notified of the uh, requirements? Yes. Yeah. So she's in touch with. Um, Steve Harper and Ron Williams is another person um, who's her business associate. He's also been involved with it, so I'm in touch with um, the three of them on on the developments with the site. So she's the property owner, um, but I've been dealing more directly with um, Steve Harper, who's kind of the person directing a lot of the stuff on the ground. So, uh, but everyone's aware of what's expected and, and what's going on. The R and D, the the excavator was up there roaming around yesterday. Uh, okay, I drove by and waved to him. He was he was just he was just walking. He wasn't he had a trailer up there and he was just walking the property probably to see how soggy it was. Um, yes. Did, yeah. uh, did I did notice though the the folks up the street that had the excavator there that is high that's really high and dry up there. Did, have you gone? Did you go up on the corner? I've not been up there. It's 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 practically a gravel pit up there. It's right next to. Right next to Dandini's house on the corner. That's where they were, mm -hmm. and just a big. Pump. They they took down some pine trees to get some sun on the house. Mm -hmm. I was just talking to them, but they're, it's high and dry up there. It's I doubt we'd ever find anything wet up and up that high. Yeah, and uh, it's not a, not impossible. And, and what's what? what how, how was that with relative? Well, Steve brought up that there was additional. There was an excavator parked, and there was work mm -hmm. going on, you know, uh, adjacent to yeah. it. But it's. I don't know. It's probably 500 feet up the street. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it looked okay. like there had been there had been trenching on site. That the trench that kind of probably led to the development of the wetlands had been delineated. And yeah. I think there was a question of where that had started and who did oh. that trenching exactly. All right. It might That's have right. been involving that neighbor. Okay. Um, so, but it's all, right. all yet to be concluded. So. All right. Sounds good. I, I wouldn't assume that the trench made the wetland. It's all sloped down that way. Yeah. Water's going to get there. Yeah. It really yeah. It might have channeled it. Contribute to it. Yeah, there, there was a yeah. trench associated with that well on, we'll say. Very good. All right, good. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Any other questions for Nick? No. Yeah, I had just, just to clear up my mind, um, maybe it's a stupid question too, but the trench that was there and the crushed rock put down, the drainage pipe will not be installed just that it would be filled backfilled now yeah that's why we had asked yeah. um to okay. remove the gravel yeah, yeah. Like that coil pipe that was sitting yeah. there for yeah. the original material back yeah. 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 Okay. yeah 
So you should. Yeah, no, a drain trap will not be installed. <laughs> okay. Don't defeat the purpose. <laughs> All right, good. Yeah. All right, good. Thank you, Nick. All right, moving on under outreach. Next nature walk, April 16th at Babe Ruth. That was oh, that's uh, that's a wrong date. So that's it's the 18th, right? It's April 18th. It's yeah. on Thursday. So I'm going to tell you the 18th. It's the 16th. Mm -hmm. And okay. at what time, may I ask? It is at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. to 5.30. This is all on the, the other outreach material that's been on Facebook and the city website and all that. Um, so, yeah, April 18th. Uh, theme is spring ephemerals or spring wildflowers. Um, fun. We'll be talking about trout lily and skunk cabbage and all the fun stuff. So I'll be my skunk cabbage. Yep. Good stuff. Oh, it's cool, cool. stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I'm not joking. Well, there should be plenty of parking down there, right? Yeah. Because yep. you, you never know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Yeah, it's oh, is there a baseball game that day? Say again? Is there a baseball game that day? Oh, no. I don't believe so. Might be a little early for them. Those games usually typically start at 5 or 6 o'clock. Yeah. I've been there most days. We're not going to call when I play Little League, Babe Ruth. Yeah. I've been there most days the last week or two. At some point, I haven't seen any cars or anything or mm. any announcements. So. All right. But yeah, that'll be Thursday. Cool. I'll have fun. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to join. I don't think I can. All good. No. So, well, should be a good time. I'll, I'll be going. It's not on the agenda, but I'll be, I'll be manning a table at Earth Fest that night. Yes. Here at City Hall. Down in the room there. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to join me, feel free, but I've done many things by myself. I'm more than happy to do this myself, too. So We did that one last year, Mike. Yep. Did you? Okay. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Did you get much traffic? No. Yeah, it, was light, mm -hmm. but it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Right. Informed some people. Yeah. Right. We were thinking of recruiting people in part for the next. Here's another segue. <laughs> and yes. they're clean up, but they all seem to have neighborhood ones doing it. And we oh. don't want to take them away from their neighborhood. Right, right, yeah, right. right. So in yeah. case you're thinking of that, we didn't okay. go anywhere with recruiting. We kept it within our own. Right. Well, I'll give it a shot. So FYI. moving on to the next item of the agenda, the <laughs> Lemister <laughs> Litter Cleanup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and when is that? So that is, it's like a month long event um, in the city, just like multiple different oh, organizations right. and things have their own separate cleanup events. Um, but it's like a citywide event that lasts from April 22nd to March 22nd. Right. So, or no, May till, or April 22nd to May 22nd, excuse me, yeah. yeah. Um, so that sh will be starting officially on Monday, I think it is, Monday or Sunday. Monday. Monday. Yeah, yeah, on Monday, um, and we'll be going until <coughs> May 22nd. Um, so we had done one cleanup last year off of Orchard Hill Park Road, yeah. um, and I would like to do at least another, if not several more. Uh, we definitely have money in the budget for trash bags and gloves and, th and things, um, so we sh should be good City to go. City Hall is not passing that stuff out this year. Um, they they may be, I, I still have to, I haven't gotten that far. But you got to get it early. Um, yeah. Well, if, if, that if was they, a, that was another thing for whoever's going to lead that. <laughs> if, if I've waited too long already and we need to furnish some of that for ourselves, then um, we do have That's the money right. with the budget. But I will ask uh, Melissa Tasca about that. Um, I bought a box of bags last year. I can remember that. <laughs> Are we trying to plan a date? Is that why it's on the agenda? Yeah, I'm just trying to get Is any, um, I have some general idea of uh, how to proceed with it, but Jim, you have a question? I just want, was that public or private property? That was private property, yeah. But it was um, a parcel that was involved with uh, some permitting that we had yeah. recently gone over, and okay. as a result well, of the site visit. The reason I ask is, yeah. I have a swamp across the street from me that collects trash. Yeah. I need That's waiters. Right, yeah. You got waiters? That's an <laughs> right, yeah. I don't have any waiters. And I, and I need to know if I can... Just tell my neighbors that I'm on the concom, I'm going into your property to clean it up. Well, you definitely would need permission from um, whoever the property owner is before going out, out there. Um, but that would be fine. I would yeah, that encourage was you to, to. When my neighborhood was developed, that was supposed to be part of the. Uh, they did uh, adjusted zoning so that it minimized it. Like the, quarter acre lots yeah so it was supposed to be land that was set aside mm -hmm. well this land was set aside but then they sold it to 
the two people. There's no development on it. Right. Each neighbor on either side of it. Just keep it as is, like a buffer kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that would be fine if there's a lot of trash and stuff in there, and it's kind of a, you know. You know we get all the uh, the dry. We're a popular driver red neighborhood now because I'm, I live half a mile away from the RMVs. <laughs> okay. I have to watch out when I cross my street and I don't get run over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that so would, to do an effective job, would you have to have layers to, to literally? Oh yeah, the it's, water? it's it's uh, it's there's trash out in the water and stuff. I have to walk mm -hmm. through the water to get get it. But you're not suggesting it was our group. No, no, no. Right. Oh, right. oh okay. so I was gonna any any. Well, I mean, I could if it, if, yeah. if that's what. <laughs> But I'll see how I'll talk to the neighbor first and see what or not. Yeah, if you know who owns that property or if you want to get in touch yeah. with me afterward and tell and get I can figure out specifically where that is and try and find the property owner. And is it big yeah. enough for an event with eight people or something? Right. Yeah. But it's an idea. Uh, we that's just as an example we have done private properties before, so I think it's not out of the question. Well I live on Jamestown, so this is a wetland between Overlook and Jamestown. The water comes down from Overlook and your well, it doesn't I guess it doesn't go over Iris. Probably doesn't go over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll check that out. I'll, I'll be in touch about that. That could be a potential site because I was thinking it's it's a whole month, so it's April twenty second to May twenty second. So I was thinking maybe every Saturday or some, every Sunday if people I are. I recommend you schedule one and get it going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather have one so and we, do a well than. Yeah. So we had talked about Johnny Appleseed State Park or that those random woods behind uh, Babe Ruth Fields where my next walk is going to be mm -hmm. as a potential site. It's a very large area. It's all state owned stuff. It's not an official park, but people do use it. There's trails out there, um, and there's a lot of trash. So and I was going to ask you, so there's enough trash out there to make a There you go. Well, well, no, no, I, I, I vote. Well, we're not voting, but I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> well, I support go. that. Okay. <laughs> so we'll we'll prioritize that. I'll try and get that going as soon as possible, and then following that, um, I was thinking maybe the Lincoln Woods, which is the Mass Audubon property, like kind of in the middle of Lemonster. It's on Union Street. Yep, on Union yeah. Street. Um, they have some vernal pools back in there. It's a pretty well used site. Union and Tisdale. Yes, exactly. Union is Union and Tisdale. Um, is it's kind of in the you, middle. Is that where you, where you did your uh, yes uh, vernal pool walk last last year and it was frozen? Yep. Got it. Exactly. You think we can entice the folks, the new owners of Whitney Field, to work with us to to do that area? Out by because that's that's a real mess, and that's right on the on the Moose Knock Brook, right? Yeah, now. I remember we had talked down by the Long Brook. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think we should talk to the owners and just say, hey, we'll we'll contribute, see if we can put a little onus on them. And I've I've so, talked again to uh, the manager of Market Basket, and he's he says he saved his money and he's got a table with plenty of water and you know, the goodies to if we do do it. Yeah, and that would be perfect. Yeah, that's. Another very low area that drains a lot of the city, a lot of trash ends up back in there. So oh, I'm sure mm -hmm. after, after last fall and, and all the rain we've gotten, a lot of a lot of has washed out in there. Yeah. Yep. It's probably and, uh, and people go out there and eat lunch and then yeah. do this too. So it'd be nice to put some <laughs> what, what are you what are you accusing people? <laughs> <laughs> it'd be nice Absolutely. to put some trash barrels out there. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. are we moving any forward on getting a date for our first one? <laughs> so, keep steering the ship. Can't get good. that dog off a bone, can you? <laughs> <laughs> let's shoot for. Uh, it just shows up. Let's, let's toss a date. Yeah, toss a date. Let's shoot for April twenty seventh. It's two Saturdays from now. I don't think I can do that, but don't don't not do it because of me. I'm, my wife's a JP, and I'll be going with it for that. I'm probably booked up with something with my wife also. What, what day did you say? April twenty seventh. Last Saturday of I've April. Big, yeah, I've got a big, the big car show at the at the uh, okay. airport. So okay. I can't. I'm in Aruba. Okay. March. Oh, for four. <laughs> you want to keep swinging? <laughs> uh, you and me, uh, Nick. Are we up with us? <laughs> so I, I can say March. I mean May. May, so May 11th. That would work fine. That would be the second Saturday of May. Nick, yeah. I got a serious technical Hello. question here while I'm yes. thinking of it. Um, this cleanup season, month long. Mm -hmm. 
you could have accumulated a lot of trash. Yeah. Um, what will happen? I mean, what what is the process for? Does the city come by and pick? Yeah. Them so I would call the city and they pick it up. Yep. I'll organize this with Melissa Tasca, who's the okay. um, or city oh, event no. coordinator. Um, <laughs> And yeah, we'll get in touch with. I wasn't there for the last spring cleanup, but I so understand. Yeah. She'll have you call. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, you don't need any special trash bag. Just they heavy, take care of the drums and everything for us. Yeah, just heavy duty trash bags. You tell them where everything's going to be collected and when, and then they'll come by and pick it up at the end of the day. Super easy. Okay, good, good. It won't, it won't hang around and get broken. No, no, no. no. We'll tell. Okay, them. Well, I'll. That's I'll I'll be coordinating with the city, so they'll they'll come get up. Okay, and there'll be other groups, I guess, right? There'll yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, yep. Okay. So that's why I'm going to see because I haven't talked to Melissa at, about this at all. Um, so some of these areas may already be um, taken yeah. by other groups. That would be great. Um, but if not, you know, we could wait. We could help out, or we could come up with new areas. But um, we'll shoot for Johnny Appleseed State Park. Um, May 11th is that? Am I hearing people are available for that? Unless we do yes, the mark and basketball. Yeah. Or um, what? Yeah. Well, we'll and, and, and which which one is Johnny Appleseed? That's down behind uh, the Babe Ruth Field. That's the one that's down there. Okay. Yep. Is there a preference amongst the commission? Personally, I I, I prefer to do Whitney Fields and Manusnik. Let's do it. Yeah. That'd be my thought, just because that's Manusnik. Yeah. Right. Okay. And it's really highly visible. Yeah. So Mike, Mike's had that phone for a while there on that one, right? Yeah. So I'll <laughs> I fill up my pickup truck once a week. <laughs> so I'll work on um, getting in touch with the property owners out there because we'll, cool. we'll need their permission um, to yep. be doing stuff out there. But Figure out a zone. And yeah. The hardest part will just be getting in touch with them. They won't have any issue with us being out there, I'm sure. But I know it can be kind of hard to get in touch with them. You're, so leading, you're I mean, leading the event for us, though. Yes. I mean, I would, I would be happy to go down to the mall office and represent the Conservation Commission. And well, I will let you know. I'll try okay. and I'll reach out. I'll, I'll get in touch with people. And then if I can't, I appreciate the offer. Okay. If I can't make it through to anybody, then I'll I'll recruit you to barge down there. Get a banana bread soup bowl, too. Yeah, there you go. So, yes. I, I think I found that exposed sewer pipe at, uh, on, at the Fallbrook Elementary School. Yes. And in doing so, I noticed a lot of trash in the woods there okay. as well. Oh, no? so that's, I mean, it's a public school, yeah. it's yep. city property, and like, these are kids, so like, yeah. they see that, they get ideas. That's a day. protected yeah. habitat down there. Too. It's a protected yeah. habitat yeah. with Woodtail. Yeah. I mean, that might be another That's a great point. Yeah, yeah. Good. that's a great right. idea. Yeah. Right. So, did you find any problem with this one? <laughs> the sewer line, no, I mean, the so the sewer line is just running through the river. It's just this. this it's exposed. It's yeah. It's an expo exposed blue pipe about a, or a green pipe about a foot in diameter. Yeah. And Do you see any turtles? Any any rock could come through and, and you know knock it up. It's a plastic pipe. Yeah. And I didn't see any turtles, but. And on that, sure. that that's not on the agenda, but I'll mention real quick. Um, <laughs> I did talk to John Roseberry at the Lemister DPW, and he mentioned that you know, I I don't know what happened to Oxbow Associates, which. Were the they were the wetlands scientists originally that were going to do the the endangered species protection plan for out there, but they just dropped off the face of the earth. No one's getting in touch with them. So John is pursuing other companies to draft that plan. We're not wasting our time with Oxbow anymore. If, but you, if you need somebody, if you need a name, let me know. I I can get them in touch. I will. That's Brian. Thanks, Jeff. Brian. Uh, John Roseberry, I was speaking with at uh, the Lemonster DPW. No, yeah, about an Oxbow. About Oxbow, because DPW was the, they were coordinating that, um, drafting that yeah. plan because they would be the ones doing the sewer work, but they need to present a wildlife protection plan. That's frustrating because that's just prolonged. Right. Yeah. 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 It's ridiculous. Yeah. But, all right. Yeah, let me know if you need to get a referral and get you one. Okay. Very good company. All right. And they bury those pipes for a reason. <laughs> so um, just jumping back to the cleanup real quick, mm -hmm. are we still prioritizing Whitney Fields? And then maybe um, Fallbrook Elementary would be a good second site? Sure. Yeah. I like that. And well, then if we... Pour your journey well. 
or Johnny oh, yeah. Appleseed yeah. State Park. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do. I, I like the idea of Fall Brook, and especially because that is in da like endangered species habitat. Right. It's a yeah. little small, but it's a little small. But there's trash back there. There is a lot. Yeah. It that's, flows through a neighborhood well, before what, getting through there. What's so. small? I mean, we we covered a decent distance last yeah. year. Yeah. We're talking yeah. over half a mile of this road, two sides. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, we had a quite a so few, there's, I don't there's know, six bags or something. And no, tires. Fallbrook is, not, is not very accessible there, but there's a path that you can mm -hmm. go, you can get to it from the parking lot. It would yeah. keep us busy for an hour if we had six to eight of us. I guess I, that's I, I, not, I don't know how it's but I don't, I don't know, know how it's just getting up and down the hill. That may be <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's, it's a gentle grade uh -huh. to Fallbrook to from from there. I think it would be worthwhile. It sounds good. Yeah. Be worth, I mean, and like I said, I didn't do an extensive survey, but yeah. I was I was actually kind of surprised to find so much trash at that spot. Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. Um, soccer fields? Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe there's trash behind the soccer field, too. Yeah. You know, like along. I'm sure all around, because there's yeah, all just neighborhoods around there. Right. So <laughs> yeah. People throw their stuff in the back in the woods, and it ends up back in there. So We pick up a lot of nips last year. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> we're, yeah. Wherever we go, I really don't think we're going to run out of trash to pick up. May 11th, you want to May 11th, get a we'll shoot for people's May 11th. Works for me. Yeah, so we'll shoot for May 11th yep. uh, at Whitney Fields, and I will be forthcoming with more information on that. Yeah. Morning, afternoon. I'd, I'd mid to late morning, like yeah. 9, 10 o'clock, somewhere in that ballpark, if I can get it okay. over with. Say like 9 o'clock. Yeah. Gotcha. You got bug spray. I'll get some. Some sunblock. <laughs> yeah. Hats sunblock yeah. definitely. And I will either uh, be providing or I will get them from the city uh, large trash bags and gloves and everything, so you don't need to worry about bringing anything. And if we if we do, we know so. What he feels. See if I. Mark about and give us a pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they, they will come through. I, yeah. you know, I'll, wait, I'll wait until make sure it's positive. Yeah, uh, he'll, he'll, he's yeah. already committed. Super. All right. All right. Cool. Manusinok Brook, it's really uh, not Whitney Field. It's right. It's the right. Park. Yeah. Right. But, but we'll meet in the parking lot, frontage. market basket area. And Let me know where you want them to set up, too. I mean, we can tell them what, what we want and what we need. Well, we shouldn't need much. We're just going to be out picking up litter yeah. for a while. We yeah. don't need a yeah. tent and a pizza, table. Pizza and water. I won't make any demands, but I'll let, I'll I'll let you know to, <laughs> to let them know when and where we'll be and whatever they want to provide or help us out yeah. with. Yeah, they room in their dumpster, too. We could, instead of just leaving it there, we could pop it in the dumpster. It's right yeah. There. yeah. yeah. Stick the rain keeps on the <laughs> What's that? You stick with yeah. the nail on the rain the keeps on the <laughs> 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 All righty, good. Well, moving on. Uh, that all set there? Yes. Okay. Um, anything under commissioner news? I don't, I don't have anything. Yes. Rich? I would like um, Commissioner Siki and Agent here, Nick, to give us reports on the eclipse. You guys, oh, yeah. you guys oh, yeah. led uh, an event that was yep. <coughs> yeah. organized and did it, and it was amazing attendance, apparently. Yeah, and you had a different experience, and don't keep us too long, but I'd like to hear some. Um, yeah, you know that? <laughs> that was Texas. Just real quickly, I went down to Dallas, Texas to visit my friend down there and see the eclipse. We saw totality. It was fantastic. It, was, it started out cloudy that morning, and we got a little worried, but... Um, Stuff started clearing out about an hour or two before, and then we got perfect view of it. It was like right um, down by the Trinity River, uh, down in Dallas. If you're familiar, it was like right by the Margaret Hall Bridge, I think it is that big crazy white bridge in downtown Dallas. So it was a nice backdrop. Um, yeah, saw totality. It was fantastic. Got cold, got dark. Birds were flying all around, um, and then it was over. And, Four minutes and yeah, and, and, and that was it. So cool. That was my second totality I've well, seen. Second. So huh? Went to see the one in 2017, and I'm planning on seeing some more. Where did you see that one? Uh, North Carolina. Nice. So and this one was in Dallas. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And the last one's in the 2040s. Last uh, eclipse in the continental U.S. until 2044, I think. So you might see it. I don't know about yeah. the rest. And that'll be just in a, that'll just be in a small part of Montana, the Dakotas. So the next.
cross country <laughs> clips won't be until the 2050s, I think. Yeah. They may we'll be in for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and then at Show and Farms, the city of yeah, actually, actually, how was that? Actually, uh, Nick and I met with the li uh, library for telescope training before. Uh, mm -hmm. Nick built a nice little viewer for the small telescope, and um, that worked out well. And they were a little bit woefully unprepared for the for the deluge of people looking for free glasses. Mm -hmm. So we ordered some more glasses for them. They went out and got another 200 pair after I did. I ended up with another 100 pair. So what my idea, they, so they had a wonderful showing down here. I, but you had to buy I, those in advance though, right? Huh? You had bought those in advance. I bought some, but as it got close, the city was sold out. People I mean, say, the one, oh, they were the, signing up. The ones that Nick, mm -hmm. Nick oh, bought, the okay. 200, what did you buy, 200? I bought that was 200, gone. 300. Yeah, something. that was gone. The library bought some, Nick bought oh, two or so 300. They, they, I bought they 200. Names and, yeah, and they, okay. they went through calls. Wow. They, they said they took 400 calls the day of the eclipse mm -hmm. at, the, at the library. So, we, yeah, and they had, they had a really wonderful crowd down there. Uh, a lot of kids, a lot of education. It was wonderful. Nick made for me uh, to, to take up to show in a pinhole viewer out of an Amazon box. And that was really popular. It was really popular, especially with the kids. Cool. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Uh, the other telescope was a little bit troublesome. I was a little nervous about having kids looking down in it. And it was, as we were trying to talk, it was, it was difficult keeping it aimed. It just mm -hmm. wasn't, wasn't the best thing. But everybody still had a wonderful view up there. There were people in lounge chairs and families and there was food up there and I would guesstimate there was 250 to 300 people up there and uh, very festive. Um, like I said, there was a line. I bought 200 glasses and, and my idea was, we've been associated with Sholin for a long time and know, know um, um, Joanne DiNardo very, very well. Mary Beth was on the board up there and um, so we, we bought 200 pair of glasses to be used with their donation apple. So it, it was a voluntary donation. We didn't make it mandatory, but people lined up and some people were giving a few cents. Some people were throwing $20 bills in there. I don't know the final number of what they collected as far as donations, but everybody was happy to do it. It was very festive, meals. Um, it got eerie when it, when we had probably 95% here, I think mm -hmm. it yeah. was. And everything went silent. It went gray, it didn't get dark, but it went gray and the birds were gone. Yeah. That was the cool thing. Mm -hmm. And then that's piped back up and just it was a beautiful day. Great time to be up there. Yeah. yeah. It was quite magic. It was pretty good. Yeah. That's it's fantastic. Really good. I love it. Yeah. I remember I, I jumped on Mike's email when he said, you know, when he put the website on. Mm -hmm. And I just got mine just before the uh, you know the eclipse. I was like sweating and like oh, geez. <laughs> I ordered open I didn't show it. I mean, there's weeks. Weeks went by. Yeah. And I was afraid they weren't going to come, but I had enough now for my immediate family. And, you know, yeah. um, it was good. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't taking the chance because I. You got grandkids, and you want. Uh, you don't want them to, by accident, looking up. You know, you no. want them to yeah. have something like that for safety. Mm -hmm. and Mike, you said there's something like 400 people come to the library. Once. That's that's. I didn't get it. Count I was heard. talking to. Uh, yeah. I was talking to the folks when I returned the telescope. They were saying it was an amazing turnout. Yeah. They, were, they were thrilled. Okay. Well, thanks to you and thanks to Nick also. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 It was fun. Yeah, they, they give you work. And yeah. It worked out well. Yeah. That's all I had for Commissioner. Oh, glad it was. Uh, Sounds good to me. Glad it was so popular. Mike sent me a video from uh, Sholin from that day showing yeah. the. The crowd there, if anyone else is interested, they should, yeah. you should send them that video. Oh, it yeah, was, that's right. Put it, it on really the drive for the next meeting. Oh, yeah, please. I will. Yeah, I'll, you throw, I'll throw it on there. Any, any other commissioner news over here? Uh, I've, I've got a notable event. Uh-oh. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my wife yelling at me to clean up my yard. Uh, <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not hey, helping you clean up your yard. Do you want it on the record? Or... <laughs> 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 no, outside of the 100-foot buffer zone, it's closer to 200. Um, I'm getting salamanders again under rocks. Yeah. You know, but I actually took two and put them in a bucket. Uh, I said I was going to bring them in with a glass and inside of a glass so you guys could see the salamanders that I captured. And, mm -hmm. God, I escaped. <laughs> well, good for them. Slippery. Good, good for them, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wife won't sleep for a week now. But every, yes, year, every, every year, even throughout the year, I, I can go down, you know, and 
or either turn a, a rock or something, and they're, they're all over the place down there. Wow. Well, that, that's a good sign. Yeah. Coyotes almost every other night in the backyard trip off the ring. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the, the uh, bobcats, coot fox, nice white tailed fox comes through all the time. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice. And the owls are back. Every year since nice. I've been there. When you know, the salamanders better yeah, watch out for the yeah. owls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got a nice little big spot up there. Yeah, got the creek running through right stuff. back there. I love it. And I care. just uh, read an article that, you know, these big trees with shallow roots, when they tip over and they leave a big hole, mm -hmm. that's a place that salamanders and amphibians like to go if you leave it and let water grow in it. If, mm -hmm. you, fill, if you go back and fill the hole, yeah. you, you don't get them. So. Yeah. Well, that's what's, that's what's happening back of the yard. All right. Nice. Love it. All right, uh, if we have nothing else, uh, we'll move on to the next meetings. Uh, the next one will be April 30th, 2024. The filing deadline was last Friday, the 12th at noon. I will not be at that one. Rich and Rich will be uh, taking over for, as, for chairman duties that night. Thank you, Rich. And then one after that is May 14th, and the filing deadline is, filing deadline is April 26th, 2024 at noon. Sorry. Did you get any filings on Friday? Yes, I did. There will be at least one, maybe two NOIs. I can't remember. Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll have a new hearing at least. Okay. Good. All right. With that, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I make that motion. Thank you, Richard. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Michael. Okay. I'll take the commission vote by roll. Uh, Jim Chambers. Aye. Nick Venti. Aye. Mike Seeke. Aye. Bob Seaford. Aye. Aye. Rich Gullick. Aye. And Chuck Raymond. Aye. All right. Meeting adjourned.